We're here today with the Small Business Coaching Brief with Kevin Kays. Kevin, what are we talking about today for small business owners? Well, today I thought we would talk about the 20 strategy questions. That really gets to the heart of why you have your business and what you're doing in your business and uh, where you're going with your business. All right. Cool. What, uh, what are, what, take us off with the first question. I, I took okay. a look at these. They're pretty deep. <laughs> well, they, some of them are quite existential uh, because <laughs> what we'll cover, we won't get to all 20 of them today, but they're in five general categories. And the first one is really, what is your purpose? And there are a number under the under that category that we'll come back and touch on individually. Sure. Uh, the second one is, what is your business recipe? How do you make money? Mm. The third major category is, uh, what kind of organization should you be? What's the character? What's the culture? Uh, the fourth one, what are your goals and priorities, and what do you have to do to make them happen? Mm. And finally, what uh, strategic conversation will capture the imagination and the attention of your stakeholders mm. and get their support? And we, yeah. we could go on at some length about stakeholders and who they are. But we'll, we'll come back to that. But initially, uh, what is your purpose? Uh, why do you exist? Why are you here? Why are you here as a business owner? For those of you who have not seen uh, Simon Sinek's TED Talk on YouTube called Why, or Getting to Why, I strongly recommend it. There's a long version and a short version. Uh, the long version is maybe 20 minutes or so, but it's well worth the time to contemplate that. And he really makes some good distinctions as far as why companies are successful and have a good, strong brand identity and they have almost a fanatic following versus companies that don't. So that would be well worth your time, uh, mm -hmm. particularly as you consider this question. But what's most important here is why do you exist? Why are you starting a company? Why are you here starting a company or running your own business? Uh, that's a question that I went through this exercise last week with my tab board and uh, proved to be a very thought-provoking one for them because it, it forced them to go back and re-examine what they were doing and why they were doing. And in many cases, it was everything from uh, helping people better relate, make their lives better by relating to technology to helping people train themselves for new careers. Mm -hmm. So there were a variety of answers, but all of them showed signs of, showed evidence of the TAB board members really giving a lot of thought to why they were doing what they were doing. Okay. Following that, once you know your purpose or once you've asked yourself your purpose, whom do you serve? Who are your customers? What, what do you do? What, what's your target market? And it could be, in our cases, from anyone that, that uses personal technology to uh, people that need to know more about how, how to code software, uh, whether they're career changers, whether they're people who have a degree that they mm. realize does not open the doors for them, they need to open yeah. a variety of things in that area. But really, knowing it's important to know who your client is mm -hmm. and why you're in business to take care of. Mm. Yeah. Follow that with another question, and it's... In the business school, it's called your, your value proposition, or in sales, your value proposition, but knowing what value you deliver. Mm -hmm. And it's really a matter of knowing what you're doing, knowing who you're doing it for, and knowing what it is that you bring to the table. What is it that makes you unique? Mm -hmm. Why is it you're, you're better at this than someone else? You provide something in a market that nobody else provides. But it's really the value that you that you deliver to your clients, your unique proposition. Following that is another one that's really thought provoking. It's well, why do you matter? Yeah. What, what difference does it make? Uh, if you're if you stop doing what you were doing tomorrow, would it make any difference? Or is right. it like leaving, leaving a hole in a bucket of water? We all know the the analogy of when you stick your finger in the bucket of water and you pull it out and you look for the hole, there isn't one. And you really need to give some thought as a business owner as to what it is about your business that matters, yeah. what it is that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And the following, the last one in the category of what your purpose is, is what's your ambition? And that goes back to why you're doing this, because 
why you're doing this really relates ultimately to your personal ambition, mm -hmm. what you want to accomplish. And we talked a lot about this when we reviewed goal setting right. a couple of weeks ago, right. what your personal vision is. That really relates directly to your ambition, mm -hmm. where, where you want to go with your business, where you want to go with your life, because they're so closely interrelated. I, Those are probably the most existential questions that you're going to face well, in, in terms of business and business strategy. Right. And, and Kevin, I, I love that the first bullet on the first category of question, what is your purpose, is talking about who you will serve. I mean, I really think yeah. prioritizing that. I mean, everybody's got a bottom line that they want to meet and a goal, that's personal goals. But you're talking mm -hmm. about you, you can't do that unless you're actually serving uh, you know, your constituency out there, um, that audience that is going to be benefit from what you're bringing. And I love that. I mean, I, and I've even had that problem where I'm looking like, well, who's my audience? You know who? But when yeah. you look at it, like, who am I serving? That just really helps get to like, oh, well, I, I want to help these people, you know, and that that helps you define that that um, demographic or more than one, you know. It does. It does. And it, well, I find it relates to even my practice mm -hmm. because I've got a particular group of people that I serve, and that's the business owner yeah. uh, that actually works in the business to try to help them make their lives better and make their businesses. Right. And that's a pretty clearly, clearly defined, but also broadly defined demographic. But mm -hmm. we, people that do what I do, the other tab business owners and myself, have a pretty clear idea of who it is that need our services and who it is we can work with. And also a pretty clear idea of the differences we can make because we've been doing this for 25 years. Right. I like, um, I lo do you ever find, I like the question where it says, you know, why do you matter? Um, I would imagine mm -hmm. that if you have trouble answering that, like saying, well, I really don't matter, then it's like, maybe you shouldn't do this right now, <laughs> you know, because no. you have to hold <laughs> on to that, that gut instinct that I do matter. I'm bringing something different that people need. And if you don't have yeah. that inherently, maybe you shouldn't try it right now, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's one thing to have the ambition, the drive and the desire to go out there and start a business. But if you don't really know who you are, what you bring to the table and who your target is, the people that you serve, the people who have a need that you're going to fill, you're going to flounder around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. It's really important to, to determine what your proposition is and what your mission is, mm -hmm. whether it's to improve people's lives by doing something in particular or making their lives easier. Uh, I think the, the Sandler School of Selling says it best when they say that all sales is eventually comes down to helping someone remove some pain. Whether it's a buyer for a company or someone that runs a company, there's something that's bothering them that's making their life difficult. Mm -hmm. And if you bring a solution to the table that makes their life easier or removes the pain, mm -hmm. makes things more convenient for them, then you've got something. And take a look at the iPhone. People didn't pay much attention to smartphones right. until that came out. And the original thought was, well, it's it may be just a gadget, but... Apple at the time was really good at getting in front of what consumer and business demands were. Yes. And BlackBerry addressed it to a certain degree, but the user interface was not as good as, as the iPhones. And there was a need that Apple identified and served it well for a long time as a market leader. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love that. So it, it does really make you dive in. I, I think usually business owners are like, oh, I want to talk strategy and, you know, you're going to get into tactics and all that stuff. But instead, this mm -hmm. really starts them out to say, no, 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 no. We're going to take some microscopic looks inside. <laughs> yeah, but we've got to get back to a very basic level of it's. You, you can build all the infrastructure in the world, but if you're not solving a problem or fulfilling a need, it's going to be a waste of money. Right. It's just going to collect us. That's right. And yeah, because then you have to look and say, well, if I can't answer these questions definitively to say I am a you know, very unique option or mm -hmm. I have a very specific niche of people that I'm reaching, you may need yeah. to assess, say, OK, well, I need to step back and say maybe I need to take a different look at what am I going to do with this and what who am I going to reach? Maybe I need to to narrow that down, you know, and make it a little more defined so that it can be successful. Yeah, it's quite possible. Now, one of the reasons that 
I sometimes use the analogy of, of the herd animals and the predator. Mm -hmm. uh, if a predator looks at a herd of animals and does not segment out a particular one that they're after and focus on it, then they'll be unsuccessful. They'll spend a lot of time and energy running after a large herd or a large undifferentiated group of prospects mm -hmm. if you're trying to sell something and not get anywhere other than being tired at the end of the day and hungry. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you've got a business or starting a business, you really need to have a sharp focus on who it is you're going to serve, a particular segment of the market. Well, it could be anybody that needs X. Well, anybody that need X, needs X may be hundreds of thousands or millions of people, but until you identify some segment of that that you can serve and serve well, mm -hmm. then you're going to be scrambling for a long time. That's right. That's right. Well, these are great questions to start off with. Um, do you want to take us into the next the next set? Because we have about well, a few minutes. I'm wondering if we can do that in four minutes, but it may be you could tease a little some bit. Things, some things to think about for next time. You certainly don't want me singing, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, what's your business recipe? How do you make money? And this builds on the first ones that we talked about. But what is it that you do that, that makes people want to part with, with their money and give it to you? And think about what's your difference. What is it that you do differently from your competition, uh, from other people that play in your, in your part of the, the sandbox? Uh, and think about, we talked about your value proposition earlier. How do you deliver it? What is, what is it that you do that makes you better? Is it more convenient? Are you faster? Are you cheaper? Mm -hmm. uh, do you just bring more value for the dollar spent? And then think about what makes your strategy superior. What is it that you're doing that, that differentiates you that's better than the other people that are in your market sector, the other people you compete with? And then finally, how will it evolve? Because it's quite literally a case of evolve or die, particularly if you're running a small to medium-sized business. It's also important to look in the large business context, but they tend to evolve more slowly, mm -hmm. but they have more resources and they will also last longer even if they fail to evolve mm -hmm. before they eventually go the way of the dinosaurs. That's interesting because, and to that point, a large company has more resources um, so they mm -hmm. can facilitate the evolution. However, it, I always equate it to, you've got a really big cruise ship you know, that mm -hmm. really takes a long time to shift its direction, whereas you've got a little speedboat, you know, less Precisely. you can make some faster turns and adjustments as needed on your course. Yeah. And you hear a lot of talk from, from the high dollar consultants and the people in the Fortune 500. I've done my time there that we need to be more nimble. Well, if you're running a small business, nimble is what gets you where you're going. Nimble is what helps you survive and what helps you adapt. Mm -hmm. much more quickly than, uh, than say, a, a large organization. Yeah. And that's one of the things that sometimes will kill a large organization is they fail to stay that, yeah. stay that way. They may pay lip service to it. They may spend hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars on consultants who tell them they need to be nimble, but it's like turning a cruise ship, as you said. Right. It's, it takes a long time to make, to make a change like that. That's right. Um, and Kevin, we're actually coming up to the end of our 15 minutes. We are. Small business coaching brief. It's brief, 15 minute digestible nuggets that you can take away for your small business coaching. And you, as always, provide them excellently. And these are really interesting. I love that these are things that we can start implementing right away and asking yeah. ourselves. Well, it fits the methodology that I use as a tab business owner and a coach is let's get something out there that's practical that actually can be implemented makes a difference something that you can do and something that you can work on that has meaning and shows results that's right well great well thank you for uh taking our uh taking us through today's small business coaching brief um for anyone watching and whoever replays this as well we have a uh, Kevin's website where he has his past episodes uh, lined up on his website of these coaching briefs, which cover a myriad of topics of strategy, personal vision, and um, looking forward to digging in next Tuesday at 9 a.m. Mountain Time so you can take us through the rest of these questions because uh, I have a feeling I, I can definitely use some of these in my own business <laughs> um, as we go. So this is like my own coaching <laughs> sessions. This is great. <laughs> but thank you for joining us today. 
Great. Thank you, everyone. See you next week. See you next week.